something like a cold shower. Well, good morning. Welcome to Del Rio, Texas. Just spent a night camping at uh, Lake Amistad at the uh, Governor's Landing Primitive Campsite. I'm actually starting a... I'm at the beginning of a big road trip out to Arizona that's going to involve some off-roading, overlanding. My plan is, my goal is not to stay at any hotels to only camp if I'm spending the night anywhere and uh, visit my dad, my possibly my brother, and just uh, get the M1102 trailer out and test out this uh, new AEV suspension. I'm actually going to head back. I'm just north of Del Rio, but I'm going to head back into town. Uh, last night driving here, I took off at night as usual, but the uh, the trailer had this kind of, uh, it started out as like a, like a jerking feeling when it, at highway speeds, but then turned into a vibration. And I'm pretty sure it probably has something to do with the fact that the tires were never balanced. Uh, I had, when I bought the new 37 inch uh, KM3s for the Rubicon 392, I had them put the three of the old tires onto a set of steel wheels that I had found used uh, that will fit on the M1102. They're an eight lug rim off of a Ram 3500, 2500. You know, the, the tires fit the wheels fine and everything, but the but discount, uh, I think, forgot to balance them or maybe I, you know, since I didn't specify, <laughs> I just figured if they mount them, they're gonna balance them. But, you know, obviously that, that wasn't the case. Uh, so they're not balanced. And I think that was causing the, the trailer to, to shake a lot and it was making the Jeep shakes some, so I couldn't really travel much over 55, 60 miles per hour without it, you know, without feeling like it was going to do some sort of damage. But other than the, the vibration, it, this setup is so far working out really well. The, the rear end doesn't sag that much on the, on the Jeep. And I don't have to use the, the riser hitch I was using before to help make the M1102 level, which still, it did not sit perfectly level even with that. Uh, now, it, without that, it sits about the same height. It rakes forward just a little bit, but it's doable. Uh, I'm willing to live with that. I'd rather not use that riser hitch uh, because it's like a multi-part thing. And, you know, a lot of people advise against that and also, it doesn't allow me to open the tailgate because it, it sticks up higher, uh, not far from the tailgate. Now I can open the tailgate and access everything back there and that, while, while the trailer is connected, which is huge. Uh, really want to be able to do that because that's where the, the uh, portable refrigerator is and you know access food, drinks. Also my tools I keep back there. Uh, the jack is located back there. It, it's just very important to get to the, the back at least fairly easily. And also the the tires that were on the Jeep before are 35s and the ones that come on the M1102 are 37. So I was hoping, you know, it only reduces it about an inch, but it helps maintain it. The M1102's excellent ground clearance and off-road capability uh, and help make it a little more level. That's a bummer. Don't know many shops that are 
tire shop's open on a Sunday. I may have to go to the next town, which is Sanderson. It's like a hundred something miles. Good year opens Monday. H and A Firestone opens Monday. Del Rio Tires, nope. Southwest Tire Shop. Four minutes. Let's try Southwest Tire Shop. They're definitely open. Well, they said they can do it. Twenty-five a piece. Not bad. Those guys at Southwest Tire and Del Rio, they hooked me up. That was nice. And they have pointed out that I am in fact an idiot because I put the lug nuts on backwards. I didn't put the tapered in. So that was a lot of the reason why they were out of balance or you know shaking, but I also had them just go ahead and balance them because you know, just to have them as smooth as possible, there's no weights on those, those wheels. So let's see if it, uh, how it drives now. I'm gonna hit the road here. Going to check out the place I was planning on making it to last night to camp. This is a little pull off that takes you down to the Pecos River. It looks like a picnic day use area that I guess it's free to camp. quite wet. Let's see, are these bins keeping anything dry in here? Oh uh, yeah, quite dry actually. Here are the stripes in Sanderson. in Alpine, Alpine, Texas. All right, this is the Marfa Lights viewing area. 
there's not really a whole lot here and it's raining right now there's like a couple walking paths picnic tables uh, I know people camped here but it says camping prohibited <laughs> but very interesting maybe one of these days I'll be back here when you can actually see the lights I'm not sure if it has to be dark or dusky dark but the rain's going to get in the way of any visibility today. I continued on through the towns of Marfa and Valentine. And as I approached this line of dark clouds, I noticed a group of people were gathered on the side of the road. I was like, why is everybody stopped? This is called Prada Marfa, and it is a permanent sculptural art installation that lies right on the side of U.S. Highway 90 just northwest of Valentine. This is something I've seen make its rounds on social media for many years, and there's an interesting backstory to it that is worth Googling. After taking a few pictures, I continued heading west on US 90, eventually joining up with Interstate 10 heading towards El Paso. Well, good morning from the Chiricahua Mountains in southeastern Arizona, the Coronado National Forest. I'm here at this dispersed campsite just off the main trail, if you want to call it, going from Portal over to the western end of the Chiricahuas. Got in pretty late last night, so slept in a little bit, but that's okay. This area is beautiful. This is, we're up in the mountains, about 6,000 feet in elevation. Temperature is around upper 30s when, we, when I got here last night. I originally was gonna camp over at uh, one of the developed campsites and the sign said that it was full. And I thought that was kinda odd on a Sunday night to be, have a campground that was full. But I drove through and I found a, a couple empty sites, but they're, I don't know, just didn't have a good feeling about it. Didn't wanna, take over maybe somebody left and was coming back there was nothing there but they're kind of cramped and I, I don't know i just felt like well maybe i can find something a little more more open more dispersed so that's what i did even though it was already like 11 30 you know mountain time but i think i think this was worth it it this is a really nice campsite there's actually several sites in here it's kind of tucked away the main road's back over there uh, this is facing north so we're surrounded we, we have mountains on all sides of us we're, we're up in the mountains kind of on a little flat area i guess anyway just super quiet no wind no noise at all it was almost too quiet <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna continue to work my way towards the phoenix area maybe explore a little bit of these mountains maybe do a little more trail riding before i meet up with my dad and uh yeah go make some breakfast kind of take it easy but at the same time do want to get on the road pretty soon what a mess oh that was a disaster the um must have bounced around and knocked the uh cap off causing that to just spray canola oil everywhere and it got wet in here yesterday because the lid was not sealed all the way and it was raining pretty bad Just as I got this all situated and cleaned up and thought I was good to go to make breakfast, turns out this, the camp stove. Yeah, I think breakfast is a no-go. I'm really bummed. That's probably the one downside, very major downside to the M1102 trailer is that it, 
it bounces a lot. It's made to hold a lot of weight. It's made to hold like 3,000 pounds on top of its 1,460 pounds that it weighs. If it doesn't have a ton of weight on it, it, it bounces. And I've done things, I've lowered the tire pressure. Maybe I should lower the all-terrain tires a little more. I haven't played around with the tire pressure of this. I've played around with the original tires, putting them, putting them at the recommended 17 on those really worked. I mean, it didn't get rid of all the bouncing, but it absorbed a lot of it. But I think that's why a lot of this got down. I was going down that uh, road last night that goes along the international border and there are parts of it that are really rough and then you're going pretty fast on it. I mean, that's, that's my guess. And then I have this stuff riding in the very back of the trailer. So it's receiving the brunt of the, the forces. So I need a better storage bins that are more you know, weatherproof, weather sealed. And B, I got to find a way to, that this just won't bounce as much or just be mindful of the, the items that I put in the M1102. I mean, the, for the most part, the, the tent is fine. Other items are fine. Uh, it's just items that you don't want to get shooken up that I probably need to be mindful of and not put back in here. Since breakfast was a bust, I decided might as well pack up and hit the trail. I didn't get a chance to see the area much as I arrived at night, so I was looking forward to getting out of camp. I also decided to let some air out of not only the trailer's tires, but the Jeep's as well. Although the road through the Chiricahuas is graded and maintained, it was still rough and airing down would provide a much nicer ride. champions again. Well, I stopped to go on a little hike here. Check this out. Think Arizona's just a worthless desert? Think again. Just wanted to stop and show you guys show you guys this view real quick. Deer, kind of waiting until I'm right there. Okay, pro 
approaching, uh, there's a little pull out to the left. Just past the cattle guard, there's somebody there. Let's find out. Bet this is running after rains. Just a beautiful, beautiful area. And yet again, I arrive and there's a new car. <laughs> what else would there be? <laughs> we are in my dad's new Buick Envision. Envision. 2023 Buick Envision. Yeah, the Bronco was a 22. What you don't see every day parked at dad's place is a Fancy schmancy Rubicon 392 with some weird personalized plate. <laughs> All right, it's bright and early here in Arizona. Me and my dad are about to go have breakfast with my brother down in Queen Creek or Santan Valley, somewhere out there. Nobody's coming. All right, we got Lynn driving the 392 for the first time. Yeah. I am not nervous yeah. at all. <laughs> Dude, you, you could be up there with Matt Moran in your reactions. You ever seen Matt Moran? The sun was setting fast, and after exploring some of the Sonoran Desert northeast of Phoenix, my dad and I quickly made our way back into town. My plan was originally to spend one more night here and then make a beeline home to Texas the next day. But instead, I decided to get a head start and leave that evening and camp somewhere most likely around the Arizona-New Mexico border. I decided to camp in the mountains just to the northeast of Lordsburg in the Gila National Forest. I was once again arriving under the cover of darkness. I'm not really a fan of this as you don't get a chance to familiarize yourself with the surroundings. This can be quite nerve wracking when camping in remote locations such as this one. You really don't know what's out there until the sun comes up the next day.
Well, good morning. Look at this amazing sunrise. Absolutely beautiful. AEV 2.5 inch lift comes with this jack base. It also has a wheel chalk, many different uses. But last night I used it to chalk the trailer just to make sure it wouldn't move forward. And it fits perfectly in the, uh, the under cargo storage compartment. Well, as much as I would like to stay here all day or explore some more of this area, it's uh, beautiful and it's not really that far from the interstate, but uh, I do need to get going. I want to get home, see my girls, see my wife, and uh, yeah, get back to reality. It's been a fun couple of days. The whole camp set up right here. <laughs> After examining the map on Gaia GPS, I tried looping back to the highway via a different route. But unfortunately, this ended at private property, so I had to turn around and go back out the way I came in. Well guys, I pretty much finished gassing up here at the Flying J in Lordsburg. Pretty much a straight shot from here, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.